we all have avenues of our life that we have been successful. So that could be personal, professional, any area of your life. We, we've all done it. So every single human being has been successful in a certain area. If you look at that area, you know you can be better. Yeah. And the reason that you have got the result that is quite good is just through that consistency. Yeah. Why me and you are so fascinated with all of this is because you're like, oh, wow, look what I've done through this domain. I'm, it's a good point. I'm but, seeing it. Yeah, but yeah. it hasn't been 100%. It can oh. be so much better. We are good. Yeah. Brian's, is Brian's hair okay? Because he's going to fucking kill me. Well, he's got my hair cut. It looks haircut? great. Are you happy with it? Are you messing? Like that's it. when I first met Dan Orla, and the second time I met him, I said, "Did you get your haircut, Dan?" <laughs> <laughs> you told me about that before. Yeah, I think I told the story as well before. We're live, by the way. Welcome back, Brian, because we're I'm, I'm rolling in from this, and Orla's in the podcast now. So welcome, Orla, to the podcast. Uh, I told the story before on the podcast, didn't I? I've, I've did no hair. Yeah, maybe potentially. I'll tell it again right now. So apologies for anyone who's heard it before. I when I when I first met Brian, I I have had alopecia for what age am I now? I've had alopecia for about twenty years. And I, when I met you, I had alopecia because I was only a couple of years ago. And the next time you came back and you saw me, which was like two weeks later, you said to me, did you get your hair cut? And I haven't had hair for 20 years. And you were deadly serious. What did you say back to that, by the way? Like, did I you... thought you were messing because I didn't know you that well. Yeah. And I said, it, was that a joke? And you were like, no, did you get your hair cut? <laughs> I was like, I didn't have any hair. <laughs> like, you definitely had hair the last time I was here. I said, it was two weeks ago, man. And I haven't had hair for 20 years. And you're like, all right. What did you ask me the other day? And you know what the worst thing is, though? I'm pretty sure the first time we met in here, we, we sat here for four hours talking. Yeah, it was downstairs, but yeah. Oh, sorry, downstairs, yeah. But yeah. we were there for four hours. Yeah, yeah. It was a long so time. it wasn't like a quick meet and no. I'm, got, I'm out of there. No. So for I was in your company for four hours yeah. and was convinced you had hair. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Maybe that's just your aura. You give off a man with hair, Do whatever I? that means. I don't know what that is means. Is that a thing? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, at the risk of going totally off track two minutes into the podcast, <laughs> welcome to the podcast, Mr. Brian Lachlan. Thank you. Thanks Great for to be coming here. back. Yeah. Um, so, Quick uh, explanation of what we're going to cover in today's episode. We are going to have a chat about Primal 60 because we just let that run its course and haven't actually kind of had a conversation for people about how we got on. Yep. And I've heard from other people how they got on. Have you got any feedback from people? Yes. So we'll talk about that. And we have a couple of other things to go through. We're going to try and keep this one to under an hour. And actually, the last one I did was really good. It was under an hour. It was, it was in an hour and two minutes, but uh, really enjoyed that one. Getting great feedback on that too. So for these types of conversations, I'm getting better at keeping it under the uh, okay. the acceptable time limits. Um, so let's go to Prime 60. How's it going? Good. I think well, maybe two of us kind of agreed that this time around Prime 60, it was a less intense or form of the 75 hard challenge that we had done. Yep. And for me, I did it and it was good. I wouldn't have had the same, I suppose, it didn't have the same impact in, in my life. And maybe I, I felt like I could have done more, um, but I didn't. But I got through it all. And I wouldn't say I felt, I found it relatively easy, but I certainly found it much easier than say the 75 hard challenge. Mm. Um, so Did you get what you wanted from it? What did you want from it? Uh, yeah, well, do you know what? I don't really know. So I think this is why the conversation is going to be interesting. Yeah, because uh, when we were having the conversation last about 75 hard, it was very clear why we were doing it. We definitely felt better moving into Primal 60. And maybe, although I did it, I kind of unconsciously did it, if that kind of makes sense. So I was w well aware I, I was doing the things, but maybe was half asleep or certainly wasn't putting the same intention that I did in the 75 hard challenge. And only because potentially I was in a much better place doing Primal 60 and I felt like I needed 75 hard. So I was kind of leaning into 75 hard because I was falling over. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about you then for Primal 60? Um, well, sorry, do you want to just cover what Primal 60 is? People don't know. If you don't know, myself and Brian did 75 hard or medium rare, as we yeah, call it. Yeah. We did a modified version of 75 hard, which is a 75 day challenge, two workouts a day. I have to drink four liters of water, read a book, um, 10 pages of a book every day. Take a picture. Uh, take a picture. Had to stick to a diet. So there's a bunch of conditions for 75 days. The reason we did it was the two of us were going through a bit of a slump. Personally, business, weren't feeling great. You suggested we do this as a reset button. And we were looking for, just to drag ourselves. Well, just sorry, quickly. We were struggling mentally. like Yeah, but that's we were, personally. We were, yeah, but overwhelmed. Like we were quite A lot of overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, we deemed it necessary to just have a focus. Yeah. And yeah. this was se separately, individually dealing with our own versions yes, of overwhelm. Yes, and then you came in here one day, I recognized it in you, you recognized it in me, you suggested this challenge, I said no, and then we did it anyway. <laughs> and uh, so we did the 75 days and we both completed our 75 days. We were expecting fireworks. We didn't get that. We discussed this on an episode before. You can go back and listen to that. Uh, but we did definitely notice changes in mm. ourselves. And for me, it was mostly my realization of the capacity that I actually have. 
And that was very powerful for me. And since then, to be very honest and very fair, I felt much, much better, much more consistent with all the things, simple things I'm doing in my life. Um, so that was 75 hard. And then we decided off the back of that, because so many people have been interested to do something else that wasn't as intense to keep our own, uh, my, I'll speak for me, to keep my momentum going from the 75 hard challenge and potentially reinforce some of the habits I'd learned from 75 hard and bring the community along as well. So again, you suggested we call it Primal 60 on that episode. We, it was off the, off, the, off the cuff on an episode we decided yeah. we'd involve the community. We put it out there, put some guidelines together. It was a 60-day challenge, less intense, one workout a day, and pretty much everything was kind of the same yeah. apart from the, the one workout a day. Um, and that was a 60-day challenge, and we put it out there to the community. And maybe we were a bit more involved with the community to start, but I kind of just decided if this is people's business, this is their challenge. If they want to reach out for help or guidance, whatever like that, they can. We did plan to do... Some group workouts. Just got so busy we couldn't do the group workouts. Um, but as far as I know, some people, we finished. Yeah. 60 days. Some people finished. Some people had to start again. Some people only started halfway through. But I'm still getting people reaching out wanting to start. So um, so that was Primal 60. So to answer your question, um, I think like you, it wasn't coming off the back of Prime or 75 hard. It was too, it, no, it wasn't too easy, but it was, it wasn't challenging enough for me to focus on it properly because I didn't focus on it properly. I kind of did it like a days ago, to be honest with you. I, I did the 60 days. I didn't miss anything on any of the days, but I wasn't really focused on it. Mm. And there was many days where I got to the end of the day and I was like, fuck, I still haven't done my five minutes meditation here in my reading. So I was like, oh, I've got this fucking, these last few bits in. And that kind of is not the point. I think the point, the reason I wanted to do another one in a different way was to make it more of a lifestyle piece. And it ended up just being another thing. I was like, oh, fuck, I have to get this done before the end of the day. And it was good but I didn't get much from it in the end and it ended up frustrating me a little bit because I wasn't in the right mindset for it. So that's my takeaway from Primus. I, 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 I had the exact same experience. Uh, you mentioned there about focus. Like I definitely wasn't focused throughout Primal 60. Not at all. And like that, I don't have my meditation done or I haven't done my, my training. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I think we almost by the sounds have pulled from the strategies we kind of learned and, and leaned into from 75 hard. So that's what I mean about kind of just doing it in a very semi-conscious way. We're like, I will just fall in here like we had done the previous 75 days. And because it was a little bit easier, quote unquote, it was easier to kind of do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I was frustrated as well by, by, the, by the end of it. Even though we completed it, I, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't feel it's it. It's interesting because thinking about it now, and this is something Jill said to me before, you said it as well, someone else said it too. Um, it became a distraction for me and that wasn't the point. Mm. So I now know 75 Harbour is great. It's great to do a Primal 60. I now know that I need to, if I'm going to do things long term, I need to structure it in a different way. And I think what we've discussed a lot over the last month is uh, really just pairing back up. We don't need more stuff, more habits and more routines and more like morning routines and stuff like that. We need to find, condense it down and just focus on the simple stuff. And that's one thing I've become obsessed with lately is the simple things. And as Hormozy says it all the time and all this kind of stuff, most people don't do the simple things well and yet have all these extravagant routines and challenges and stuff. And I I, like, I, I really understand the likes of doing a 60-day reset or something like that. It's amazing. But long-term, it's about the small, consistent things. Well, it's interesting what you said there, a 60-day reset, because I think we had a reset from 75 hard. I got I, reset when I got knocked out. Yeah, well, there <laughs> you go. But I just think these challenges, I think that's what they're for. They're meant to reset you yes. when you're not in a great place. And because we had got that from 75 hard, I don't think we were ever going to do much more with this challenge because we, we didn't necessarily need this challenge. Yes. Uh, which, where our frustration came from, because I'm the exact same as you. I'm in a much better place since we completed 75 hard. Now, I haven't kept up all the practices like we had then, but I'm certainly doing all the systems. Primal 60 obviously was a little bit less of it and had them in there, but I'm certainly better mentally, physically, the systems that I have and, and what I'm doing. And then what you're talking about there now, what we would want to do now, because we keep talking about this every day around focus. And we realize just this distraction that's everywhere and not just in our professional life, in our personal life, you know, M making sure we're present with our kids, making sure that we are, when we're training, we're training, not being on, on, on our phone, whatever it is. But the difference, what I'm really learning now over the last kind of four to six months is just, we don't need to overhaul, like you're saying, we just need to get better at focused work or focused whatever it is that we're doing. Focus. <laughs> B 
beautiful. It's, it sounds so easy. Yeah, you've hijacked. I'm going to do a solo podcast on this top topic. topic oh, sorry. But no, you brought it up, so let's go for it now because it's good to talk about because it, it is one of those things I'm really kind of focused or obsessed um, on at the moment is this idea of focus. Uh, I think I wrote something a while ago, which is not mine. I took the quote from somewhere. Uh, maybe it was Dan Cole. Focus is a superpower. And the more I'm able to harness this this focus thing, the more I realize it is actually a superpower. If I can focus 10% more in a day, I get 1,000% more done. It's insane. And when I say focus, what I'm talking about here really is avoiding distraction. So avoiding the phone, social media, um, unnecessary kind of change of context or doing a million different things at once where you can't actually focus on the thing that you're supposed to be doing. And it's stark for me the difference when I come in here specifically to, do, to work or when you go to train if you're in a mindset of this is the thing that I am doing, it's really simple. I'm not going to see an immediate return, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to focus on it and get it done well. It's an insane how productive it can become when you really consciously think about it. If you're unconscious about it, I'll come in here and I'll do a million different things. I won't shift the needle at all by the end of the day and be like, I was so busy, but nothing got done. What the hell has gone on there? Whereas if I'm focused on one thing, if I can do it and set the environment and avoid the distraction, put my phone on soiling, do the Pomodoro technique, whatever I need to do to give myself 35 minutes, it's insane how productive I am. So that's kind of my new thing. It's like, I don't need a million different things to get this done. I just need to focus. And how do I do that? It's removing stuff. It's not adding stuff in. I don't need a special walking treadmill for my fucking desk. I don't, I don't need all this stuff or anything like that. I need to remove stuff and have a singular purpose for this next 35 minutes. And that works well for me having the small condensed work windows. That's so interesting. I was talking to a client uh, today because we all do this. Uh, she's trying to go down a new career path. So she's like learning new skills and she has things in her calendar two or three times a week to work on this work. And what she's doing is she's doing the washing, she's doing the cleaning, things that have to get done. And all we do then, and we all do this, it's productive procrastination. Yeah. So we're like, oh, you know, this has to be done and it does have to be done. Yeah. And we say, well, look, I have to do it. So I can't do this thing. Because yeah, oh, it's yeah, fear yeah. and it's difficult and we know it's going to require uh, us to essentially progress and work harder. So we just go and do the washing or we go and do something that is needed to be done but can easily be left until later or tomorrow or for somebody else if we, if we uh, communicate that. So I, I completely agree. I think what we learned from Primal 60 was, again, uh, although we didn't add more, we are still adding more things. And what we are recognizing is we need to say no more. We need to get rid and then do them basics that we've built from 75 hard at a more focused scale. Yeah, 100%. So what does that mean? So how, how do we do that? that that's my question. Because I, I think what I want to do now for the rest of this year, particularly going into the last quarter, like we're getting busy in work. I'm, there's a lot going on in, in, in my personal life. I do want to be better for this quarter, right? So Primal 60, I was kind of happy to even just keep going. You know, I was like, yeah, whatever. But I want to be better for this quarter. I want to do more focused work. I want to make it as simple as possible so I can't fail. What can we do? I'm not asking about it because I don't know. Do you not know? I do know. You do know. Well, well, what? So, g give me an example. Are you asking me for the benefit of the listener here, or do you, do you actually want the answer here? Well, I like you have loads of answers. Well, give me give me an answer for me. Like you know me, give yeah. me an answer of what you think I can do once, twice, three times a week, or a certain goal or something I can work on. Well, I I I go back to what you always talk about in terms of like planning it. For, for me, planning things, planning the things you don't think you need to plan work really well for me. Like planning your leisure time, planning your distractions. Yeah, okay. Planning your distractions is a really interesting one actually. Like if people think, we think as people that we have to remove all of the things we like doing if they're distracting us. But you can plan those things in and then you don't feel guilty about them and you also have them put in, a, you, you've placed them into your day. If you like doing it, put it in your day. If you like scrolling on social media, you can like schedule in 20 minutes of scrolling on social media and then you know it's coming you can do it you don't feel guilty about it and you can put it away and you can actually set that context for your brain I'm doing this thing right now so you're not distracting yourself from anything you're actively doing this thing uh, it, stuff like training working out gym that's all the stuff you would have talked about like put in the personal stuff first yeah. put in the off days first all that kind of stuff but you can plan your distractions as well and that's a, a technique I like because then you're not straining the whole time it's like food you're not eliminating all the food you like you're building it into the diet if you're having two and a half thousand calories a day you can build in a chocolate bar if you like a chocolate bar if you're eating healthy with the rest of your diet, obviously. So it's not about you have to kill the chocolate bar because then all you're going to want is a fucking chocolate bar. It's the same with like Instagram, watching TV, reading a book, Netflix, whatever. Plan it in. And then you don't have to feel guilty. You know it's coming and you're going to give yourself that reward. But then 
once you have that in the diary, you can plan the blocks of work around that. So that's one thing I'm like, I'm. It's hard because distractions are called distractions for a reason because they feck and distract you. So I'll come in here with the best intentions, my entire day planned out, and anything can throw me off course. And once it throws me off course, it's almost like, ah, oh, the day is fucked now. I may as well just do whatever. And um, so I use techniques like batching with from Tim Ferriss. I try to only look at my emails twice a day in the morning and in the evening. If I have my emails open and an email comes in, my head is like, could be a client, I have to answer the client, blah, 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 blah. Like, some of the emails you, they can wait till the end of the day. If it's urgent, they're not going to email you if it's urgent. So you can batch that for the end of the day. So I know on my email, so I don't have to strap myself with emails. My phone, I put it on silent, I turn it off, or I try and put it on the table here so I'm not, because my hand will automatically reach for it. So I just understand the things that derail me and kind of just remove them from myself rather than trying to discipline myself, like put the phone there and really train myself. Because Huberman talks about that side of things as well. You can actually dis- tra- use, say, that impulse to go on social media. When you feel it, you can actively resist it and you can train your resistance. So you can do that as well. But for me at the moment, the easiest thing for me to do is just put my phone over here and then I can't actually reach it. Well, we talked about TikTok. I got rid of TikTok. Oh, let's, let's go TikTok, yeah. Yeah, I got rid of TikTok, uh, I don't know now, but three weeks ago. And I, I said, telling you, I was like, I'm on this thing. I don't know why. I'm getting lost in, in, in this thing. And, we, and you were saying, just get rid of it. Yeah. And I, I got rid of it. And I, I swear to God, my, like particularly TikTok, yeah. it is so addictive and it just gets you in. And I'm watching nothing. It's absolute bullshit for half an hour. And I don't follow anyone. So I just don't know what, but obviously it does. The algorithm is giving me what is going to make me stick around because I've been here for the last half an hour watching yeah, nothing. Yeah. Um, but, but just before I even go to TikTok, because what you're saying all there, I agree with all of it and I do bits of it already and I wanted to do more of it. But what I've decided, I didn't do it this week because I, I, I was overwhelmed at the start of this week and I wanted to do it this week, but there was so much going on that I said no. But this is what we do for uh, staff members if you want to kind of help them uh progress their roles or we're going to get a new staff member on and then particularly I've done this in the past a time study every half an hour ah, very good. what do I do so what I'm going to do for Monday next week is literally just write out what I'm doing every half an hour from when I wake up to when I, when I go to bed what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to just get a bit more clarity of where I'm at right now and then like I said there take away just go okay look there's an hour or two here I can just take away or I'm on the phone here or get off so I have just been overwhelmed particularly, say, the last week, but even the last couple of weeks, that I found it difficult to take the action, all the things you're saying, because I, I, I do know them. Yeah. I do know I should be doing them, and I am doing some of them kind of well, but I, I need a bit of space. Yeah. I need a bit of just on a piece of paper or, again, on Excel, and be like, okay, where it's, am I at? Isn't it interesting, because it goes back to that phrase again, the Carl Jung quote, that's in more of an identity and a shadow work style of things, but most of the distractions for us are unconscious. We kind of know they're there, but it's unconscious. Like you reach for the phone, it's built in, it's the dopamine drive, whatever. And there's a resistance to making it conscious because you know it's in there and you can, there's a lot of work to analyze myself when I notice things I don't I, I don't want to be hard on myself and all that kind of stuff. So it's really hard to sit down and actually do that exercise and, and what would you call it, a time study? Time study, So yeah. much resistance to doing a time study because you know you're going to find things in there. But I think that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. It's really revealing. But once you do it, you make it conscious. Yes. And when you make it conscious, you can't ignore it anymore. And as you always say to me, if you keep ignoring it, despite the fact you know it's there, the pain will become unbearable. Oh. And I've experienced that many times because yeah. I'm very aware of most of my foibles and I don't change most of them. <laughs> so they become really uncomfortable for me because I know, and especially, like, I know we talk about this all the time, but it's really important. I'm running a business and I'm 100% responsible for what goes on in here. So, I have the pain of knowing that if I have a if I have a day where I've allowed myself to be distracted, I'm going to suffer now because I feel shit, and on the back end because my business won't develop or or or, or move forward, or the needle won't change. It's, it's just me. Whereas if I, if it wasn't if I wasn't in that situation, potentially I could get away with it. I'd still feel shit, but unless I'm doing something outrageous, I'm not going to get fired. Whereas now, if I get fired, not as irrelevant. Like the, yeah. nothing nothing happens. And the business doesn't grow. I I don't earn any money. Like so. It's uh, well, yeah, but it's about being conscious. Well, you go back to that conscious thing because when I got rid of TikTok, I swear to God, for three days, yeah, it's nuts. I would go into my phone yeah. and I'd be like, it's, and, not, it's not there. And your brain is so well, what you know how many swipes were there, you know exactly where on the screen to press. Like, it's like, it's, it's not there. I'm just doing it. It's like, it's literally not there. Yeah. And But I, I don't do it now. It's gone. But for the first three or four days, it was just, so, I, it was crazy. Yeah. And like I said, t- Instagram's turning into TikTok. I mean, they're making them much more um, addictive because, that, you know, they want you on this, these platforms longer. And yeah. social media is just one aspect. You know, there's so many different distractions that we have. But like, again, I think the hardest thing is making the the, the unconscious conscious because like I said, it's so revealing. And it, it really opens you up to be like, no, no, you're not taking any responsibility. You're doing this, 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 this wrong. Yeah. But I think if you just go back to it and have some empty for ourselves, like we are all human. Yeah. And yeah. we're never always going to get it right. And that's okay. And this stuff is designed to... to 
catch us. It's designed to distract us. They literally want us to spend more time on it and we want to spend less time on it. It's a battle. Like they're just, It's designed to get us on there. Not because it's evil. It's because they want more screen time so they can sell us more stuff. Like So it's, it, we are fighting a battle against things that are much smarter than us and much less organic than us. They can hijack our organ. Like this, this whole idea with dopamine now, it's a massive buzzword, but most people, I think, think dopamine is the reward molecule, but it's not. It's the motivation molecule. So it, it's, it's the desire to swipe to the next thing to get that new buzz to get so it's it's the dopamine that drives that so if we're struggling with our motivation to do work it's because we it's all been sucked up by this short form change of context so how are you supposed to sit down and and write that email or do that thing that's not inherently exciting but that's going to give you the the long-term rewards if your brain is tuned in to constantly be motivated every two seconds for a change of context. And that change of context thing is important as well. So, but again, if, you, if you're if you aware of that, like the biggest thing for me, there's two things I say now, uh, and it's why it's why I never answer the phone. It's if you ring me and I never answer the phone. This is exactly why I don't answer the phone because someone said to me once, if you're constantly checking emails and checking phone calls and stuff like that as well, you're acknowledging that everyone else's time is more important than yours. So that's the first thing you're acknowledging because if you're, if you're available on the phone straight away, that person's time is more important than whatever you're doing right now. Now, obviously, if somebody close to you calls you, this could be an emergency or something like that, but random people, friends calling you, whatever, for a chat, you're acknowledging that that's more important than what you're doing right now. And I'm not saying just work. I'm saying whatever you've decided mm-hmm. is important right now. And then the second thing is this idea of giving away your power. So we know that this changes how our brain works in terms of the dopamine. And we know it's taking motivation from us. So my mantra kind of when I, when I'm when I get caught down like a scrolling hole or something like that or watching loads of videos on on uh, YouTube or something, it's like this is actively taking from me. It's taking my power away and that power is what I say that I want to become more robust and stronger and to build a business. This is, this is all the things I say and I'm allowing this to take my power and then I get really angry. I'm like, fuck this thing. It's not taking my power. And I fuck my phone across the room. I was like, that's not taking my power and it sounds a bit extreme and weird but it helps me to get a context for what am I doing here? This thing's trying to take my power. Fuck that. It's, it, I know it sounds weird, but it, no, he, it helps me then go, I'm, I'm applying that to this now. And then I do this thing, whatever this thing is. No, but I, I think it's great because that mantra, or, there's something that can just get you out of your funk, yeah. get you clear, going, wait a second, what am I doing right now in this moment? Because yeah. like I said, and that's what I, I mean, what I would love then for the rest of this year for me is that kind of focused work. But then it, it doesn't take much. Imagine just doing that once, twice or three times a week. And whatever the focus work could be, again, that could be literally spending time with your kids. It could be working on your professional life. It yeah. could be going to the gym, but it, you're actively putting that in. And like anything then, we're just trying to be consistent one, two, or three times a week. And then we can develop that over time. Yeah. And th- this is why it's so funny with me and you, because we do a lot of this good stuff. Like I, I've turned all my notifications off. I got rid of TikTok. I don't, so all the things I do, a lot of really good things and I'm still sucked in. It's like, yeah. it's never ending. Yeah. So, it's a hit. You have to just keep raising the standard, otherwise. And I think this works for me and you as well, because when you do make that unconscious conscious, you see it everywhere. Yeah. You go, holy shit! And again, if we're talking about revealing to ourselves that it's our own fault, you keep seeing that every day, or every week. You're like, I'm a fucking idiot. It's pain. Yeah. It's pain. And I don't want to be my motivation to be sapped out of me. Yeah. I, I I don't want that because I don't, I don't even like it. Yeah. I don't feel great doing these things. So it's on me. To be better. Yeah. It's on us to be better. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, and and there's this idea that, again, I think it is Huberman, again, your mind can't change your mind. So trying to give out to yourself or berate yourself for scrolling on TikTok is very unlikely to work. So that's why like, I'm a big fav- fan of uh, changing your environment or like doing do, just doing something different or working in sprints where you can constantly get up and go for a walk or something like that because your body can change your mind. So if you are in a funk, the chances are you could stay in that all day and you could think to yourself, oh, I should really do this work now, but it's really hard for your mind to change your mind. But Very if you good. can change your environment, as in like, not have your phone beside you, get up, go for a walk. And Sorry, is this back to say the dopamine? Because again, we're getting these yeah. sensations the, and feelings. He, he and... talks about it in many different contexts, like anxiety is a big one. He talks about it. like you can't think yourself out of being anxious. You just think yourself into more anxiety because you're trying to combat your thoughts with your thoughts. But you can train or you can go for a walk or you can remove yourself from that environment and have a change of environment or you can do some breath work and changing your physiology, we know, will actively change your mindset. It'll make you feel better. Not only because you're getting the release of endorphins and stuff like that, but you're you're removing your body or you're moving your body, increasing blood flow, increasing oxygen saturation to the brain. You're doing all these different things that will change the way you think. 
it happens. You don't even have to think about it then. It happens way easier than if you sit here and try, why am I so anxious? I, I'm going to think my way out of this problem. Usually you think yourself deeper into the problem. Um, so using your body and why I'm saying that in the context of focus is work sprints is why I found work really well. So 30 to 40 minutes and then I'm up and I'm doing something different or I'm moving. I'm going for a little walk and get a cup of tea or something like that. And then I, I reset it. So I'm act, I actively know that my focus will wane in the next 35 minutes and I'll probably gravitate. Either my work will get shit or I'll gravitate towards something that's distracting. So, okay, I'm going to give myself five minutes now and I'm going to um, write that email or I'm going to fucking watch that video that I wanted to watch and I'm going to give myself five minutes and I'm going to go back and do another 30 minutes or 35 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. It's that Pomodoro technique thing. Um, but even that, I'm not. I'm aware that my brain is going to slip into distraction. So if I'm aware of it, just do something about it. Change the environment, change the, the position of your body, do some breath work, do five push-ups, go make a cup of tea, anything. And then you can reset it again. So you build a structure that works for you. So if you're listening here and that doesn't sound like it would work for you, try it and then try something else and then try something else. And But just acknowledge that we are human and we are going to get distracted and we are going to get tired and the work is going to fall off the edge of a cliff after 35, 40 minutes. We're not designed to sit for six or seven hours. And I know some people can do that, and fair play to you, but in my experience, the quality of what you're doing really falls off quick. So if you want to optimize how productive you are and how focused you can be, break it down. You understand how your brain works. Um, remove the distractions rather than try and fight the distractions, especially if you're like, you have a lot of work to do, you're very busy. The last thing you want to do is like, put the phone there and actively resist it. Yeah. Just put it somewhere else or put it on silent or whatever. And um, there was something else I wanted to mention there on that as well. I well, can't remember what's gone. Let, let me ask you a question then, because let's say from 75 hard to primal 60, we go into the last quarter. What is your aim in regards your wanting to be better or, you know, what you want to do? Like, because we kept this focused work. We've been talking about this for a while now. Yeah. So is, is that, again, what you want to improve upon as well? Yeah, and you made a great point to me the other day there because I, I listed like seven things. I, I thought I was like, I'm working on these seven things. And you're like, hold on, like one of these, well, you're going to be really good at one of these things. You can't be brilliant at all of these things. So there's a couple of things I want to focus on coming into this last quarter is that idea of focused work because I'm now, funnily enough, seeing the benefits and rewards of the last two years and it hasn't been two years of focused work, but it's been consistent about... 40 or 50% of the things that I've done over the last two years have been decent and 40, mm -hmm. 50% have been terrible, inconsistent all over the place. So I'm only half doing the stuff, but I've done it consistently. And you know this, even when I'm not feeling great, I'm doing the stuff and I maintain a standard for my clients, for example. I always maintain that standard for my clients where my personal standards might slip. Um, and that's only 50% capacity. And now I'm seeing the rewards from all that. I'm like, all this stuff I've been doing for the last few years, it's starting to like, there's, it's, it's taking that small up, up step in the curve. So that's giving me like real belief. Yeah. So now I'm like, I'm double down on this. Imagine I could get 60% of the stuff done as efficient as I did. Like just, and, and it's all the simple stuff. So what I want to focus on is finding that extra few percent in terms of my focus. So minimize more distractions. Because I found after 60, after Primal 60, like went off the rail for a week. Yeah. Like I haven't touched see these wacko bars. Two or three weeks. Fucking haven't touched a wacko bar in four months. Came in here, ate four of them with a cup of tea. I was like, and in my head I was like, gorging on wacko bars. No problem with 60. You can eat the fuck I want. I was like, hold on, this is not the point here, pal. Um, so I like went off the rails for a week and went off the rails for me is like four wacko bars and a beer at night time. It's not but like, th I think that is, is important and go back to it. Like these kind of challenges yeah. are good to reset you. Yeah. They're just not sustainable. No, and you need to know why you're doing them. Yeah. And you need to know how you're finishing them. Yeah. I didn't know how the fuck we were finishing those challenges. So, um, but well, I just want to go back to what you said there because you were like, uh, you've been really consistent, say, work wise over the last two years. With some things. You know, with some things, and it hasn't been great focused work. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's really important to note that because we all have avenues in our life that we have been successful. So that could be personal, professional, any area of your life. We, we've all done it. So every single human being has been successful in a certain area. If you look at that area, you know you can be better. Yeah. And the reason that you have got the result that is quite good is just through that consistency. Yeah. So I, I, I think. Why me and you are so fascinated with all of this is because you're like, oh, wow, look what I've done through this domain. I'm, it's a good point. I'm but, seeing it. Yeah, but yeah. it hasn't been 100%. I can Aww. be so much better. And I, I just think as we keep doing these things and, and the never perfect, we just understand the capacity that we have to be better. And I think that's all it really truly is. It's not yeah. necessarily for the outcome or the result. It's just knowing that we go, wow, I have the potential to be better for myself and then as a result, yeah. I'm better for everyone else. That's another great point. Once you can disconnect outcome with input. Mm. Did I read this by Homozi this morning? I don't know, I didn't see it. Usually you say the same things that I do, you're, you're served the same stuff. If you can if you can unlink the outcome with the thing, with the input, with the effort, mm. that's success, that's gonna, you're going to be successful because yeah. you're no longer relying on a direct 
input from the effort that you put in, or, or direct response from the effort you put in. So when I send this email today, or if I put up this social media post, if I launch this new offer and I don't get immediate feedback, irrelevant, completely relevant to me. It's not, but that's what I'm trying. That's yes. what I'm trying to get to. Because if I, I know for a fact, if I keep doing this, I'm going to get better at it, and it's going to bear results. But only if I can keep doing it. And most of us can't keep doing the thing because we don't get the immediate result because we want the immediate result. So we change. We be shiny, shiny objects. Or, or that even that, that distraction pulls you away. Or the distraction pulls you yeah. away. Yeah, and that's what I mean. There's so many different avenues to this. Yeah. It's not necessarily just this one thing. No, but it's a continual process that is always tomorrow. Yeah. And if we aren't aware of that, again, making that unconscious conscious, then we're just going to be pu- pulled, dragged. And, and it's hard to do, yeah. like take training. It's hard to train every single day when you're not seeing results. So it's really hard as well. So if it's hard, you're probably going to stop. So there's loads of barriers there. But if you can do that and not have the outcome and the input be linked, I really like this idea. I like that. So now, like I, I said, I think I said to you today, for the first time, I'm getting so comfortable with feeling not great. And not, not in general, like not psychologically feeling not great, but like having to do all this work. I'm comfortable now. The process is actually becoming a bit more enjoyable even when I don't see immediate results. I'm like, let's, let's take social media as an easy example. If people post on social media regularly, you want to post something and get feedback. And if you don't, you're like, what the fuck? I don't get the likes. I don't get the fun. And I see this now because I work with a lot of people on social media too. Like to put up a video and they're like, oh my God. And for me now, it's irrelevant. And I tell people that's a re- that one video is irrelevant. The next 30 videos are irrelevant. The fact that you're doing it consistently, consistently is relevant. And if you get a bad or a good video and you change what you're doing, we're missing the point here. So let's get rid of the outcome. The outcome, if we can stay consistent, you're going to be ahead of 99% of people. So there's no way the outcome can't be good. So if you can get on social media, if that, this is your thing, and post consistently and just improve constantly and just do the simple things and do not, you can look at the likes and all that kind of stuff, but do not make any decisions based on that. Just completely remove the outcome. There's no way you can't succeed. Like, no way. It's brilliant. I, I think it might even be Hermosi talked about this, but like, lengthen the time frame. Yeah. So all it is yeah, yeah. is like extend it. So you're doing something for four weeks, just make it six months, make it a year. If you keep extending the time frame and then you end up keep doing the thing, you're going to get the result. Yeah. It's it's impossible that you won't. And we just look at that time frame or the outcome, like you said, straight away. And that potentially then is pulling us out from doing the work. But if you just keep doing the work, you will get the results. Yeah. It's impossible that you won't. Yeah. It's just doing the work is difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. And um, so to answer your question, you asked me for the last quarter, what am I? Yeah, go on. What am I? What did you ask me? My goals. Well, what's the focus? Yeah. What are you? What's trying the focus? To get? The focus is focus. So the okay. focus is getting better at that. Like the, I said, the fifty percent of stuff I did, I want to get better at creating that environment for consistent focused work. I'm like, I really, really love this concept now, and I feel great when I get a day when, or when I get forty minutes. I'm like, yes. I did that 40 minutes. The rest of the week would be shit. Mm. It's like, I did that. For, I know I can do it. Right, let's get two 40 minutes. Right, let's get 60 minutes today. Um, so that's one. I, and I, I'm very happy now if I improve that by 2% by the end of the year, I'm like, perfect. Because in 10 years time, that, that's, fucking, that's 50%. Yeah. Um, quick maths, by the way, right there. Um, and then physically, I want to get back into my training again because whatever happened over the last few weeks, we, we were in championship. It always happens to me this time of year when we're in championship. I'm not I'm not in the gym as much because I'm training hard for championships so we're knocked out now and then I was like, I want to get this feeling of vitality, get my training back again. I love training in the winter because I'm usually eating more, lifting more, feeling better and doing a lot less kind of pounding and running and stuff like that. So, but this is where you made a great point. Like you were like, but you can't be excellent at all these things. I was like, I'm comfortable 70, 80% mm. With the, with the training in terms of like intensity every now and again I'm going to miss sessions I've got two kids I'm in the business I'm not making excuses ahead of time but if it happens I'm okay with that now um, so they're the two things I really want to focus on and then being always being more present or more and more present with my family so if I can in some combination just move the needle somewhat on those three things it'll be a great end of quarter for me that's interesting you say that because I, I, we were talking here for like 20 minutes or so or how long is it so far? 32 minutes interesting because Sailor uh, my daughter has been in play school for the last three weeks and what happened before she was in play school was that I would actively go home and quote unquote mind her while Danielle went to the uh, gym and that was my time with Sailor and I've lost that time so I'm not actively putting that in now because she's like gone for three hours a day and I only noticed that literally as we were talking here in terms of my kind of focus I I want to focus time with her I want to spend time quality time with her and I've actually let that go over the last three weeks so is it any surprise that I feel a bit shitty because I value that I love her to bits I want to literally spend time with her and before the the last three weeks I was literally block booking that time in and now I'm not this is really interesting that you say that 
I know many people who would say that you shouldn't have to like book time in with your kids or actively be focused and present with your kids. That should just come naturally. And this is a fallacy. And I hate when I hate hearing this because people feel really guilty. I should just I should just naturally be present when I'm with my kids or when I'm with my partner or when I'm doing these things with my friends. I should naturally be present. Nowadays, it's so impossible to be present. Impossible. Because you've got your phone, distractions, everybody's busy, everybody's working, everybody's under pressure. There's all sorts of shit going on. Prices going through the roof, stress, people watching the news, all this mad shit going on. And you're supposed to just naturally be completely at ease when you're with your partner. And it's supposed to be so natural and amazing every single time you do that. And if it's not, there's something going on there, there's something wrong there. But again, this goes back to when I first met you, you talked about putting these things in your calendar. If you don't put in time in your, you just realize it now, if you don't put this time in with, your, with Sailor, you could be six months down the road and still have not realized it because you're under pressure. Mm. There's things going on. And t- her life is changing. She's going to school now and Danielle's life changes and your life and things get busy. and So that might never come back, ever. But if you schedule it in with some people going, schedule in time with your kids. You schedule that time in with your kids. And this is not something that I do, so I'm, I'm thinking about this as well as I'm talking yeah, yeah. to you now. Then you know you're not going to miss it. And you can work on being present and you can really have a, a great time because the world isn't going to change. Like the world isn't going to stop and give you more time with your kids. You have to like carve that out of your day. Mm. And whether you, if you, we bang on about business, but if you work, no, normal job, if you have other commitments, whatever, none of us have a lot of that spare time. And just even give, give it that because like I dropped Sailor, I did, did this morning play school, I picked her up and also yeah. I'm still seeing her. I see her more. But that hour of intent for three hours a week, that's gone. Yeah. That was just me and her. No, no, nothing else. We could decide what to do. I had no distractions. That was block booked in my calendar. Yeah. And I've lost that. I've only just realized that there. And that's what, what, what led to my burnout, say, three or four years ago, was I cut out time with friends and family. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. I had to. I was busy building a business. What do you want me to do? Fucking yeah. busy. Get out of here. Yeah. But no, no. I actually value that. I want to be around people that I love. And if I'm not block booking that in, like I said, it's basically six months or a year. Yeah. Yeah. And even when you are dropping the sailor in in the month, like some mornings could be lovely and some mornings you're fucking stressed out of your mind because you're late for something, you're thinking about something, someone's just sent you a message. Uh, so even that period of time might not be quality time. Yeah. So you have to book it in. Well, I think because it's going to segue nicely, I think, into what we may talk about next is environment. I literally only learned that right now by just having this conversation. And me and you always have cracking conversations. Yeah. And I had a cracking night a few weeks ago, me and you going to Jordan Peterson. Oh, yes. We had a, a, an unbelievable time beforehand having dinners, having great conversations. Yeah, we yeah, sat yeah. down and watched a lecture for two hours that flew by yeah. that we would normally sit down on our own and watch on YouTube. And we're able then to have a conversation around it. And uh, so basically what I'm just trying to say is just the importance of environment. And that's where you kind of gain the awareness from something that I have just said and you just said sparks an idea and you go, okay, wait a second. So you know, making the unconscious conscious, yeah. other people help that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Podcast, podcast blog here I had a client or a potential client in yesterday lovely guy with a great conversation great chat I meet everybody in the studio beforehand if possible and uh, I, he, we were having a chat and I got I was telling him why I started this business and why I love podcasts and I got so passionate so like and it, it, it's helpful for me every now and again to remember that but I was telling him like I get to come here tomorrow we don't even know what we're really talking about on this podcast we have a loose idea but I get to go on a Friday evening and sit here in the studio with you and just have a conversation and I'm going to feel great after that conversation Mm. no matter what we talk about because we've created the environment to be able to do we do this anyway but to be able to do this in this environment put the time aside book it in on a Friday evening like that is amazing. So it is it is powerful to set to set that environment for yourself. Um, how did you enjoy Peterson? It was class. Yeah. Like it was because it was people are like, well, what was it like? I was like, well, just if you watched any of Jordan Peterson lectures, you've seen the content. Yeah, yeah. It was very similar content. I think actually what he does, he has a different. He doesn't script what he's going to say. He has no real exact plan. He just comes, looks down on, on the few piece of paper, and there's, there's a topic there, and then from there he kind of just pulls and it brings him on a different journey on each. Yes. Each one. So. I was just lost for two hours. I just sat there like I would normally sit there and just listen. And it was just, the reason that I, I love uh, his content is it's just so, oh, it, it covers everything. It's because you you're know? a bigot. Yeah, no, but it covers, no, yeah, we'll get, to, get yeah. to this, but covers being a father, taking responsibility, like yeah. just all different facets of life. And again, we go back to what we said earlier on, like life is really difficult. We all struggle through it. And then having people like yourself, learning from others is like the best way to navigate it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you called me a bigot there, so what, what, what are you saying? No, I'm laughing because we planned this. I know we, we planned this. It's a smooth segue into it. But 
people sometimes hear names like Jordan Peterson. Uh, first of all, let me say I, it was. I, I agree, which was a, it was a brilliant night, and it was content that we'd already seen. And some people I said it to, they didn't really understand it. Like we didn't get anything new from the yeah. get new from us. Like that, I don't. For me, that wasn't the point. It's nice to be in an environment where you get to see this man live with a lot of respect for him. Don't agree with everything he says, but a lot of respect for him. I've learned so much from his content. I've really enjoyed his journey over the last few years. And it's, it's, it was really cool to be able to sit and have him talk to us about the book that I've read, the concepts I've absorbed. And he's right there. Mm. He's right there in front of you. Like, and I was there with June, I was there with Ben, and we were able to have conversation off that. And it, it just inspires so much thought. And every conversation we have, about, usually about the same stuff, is always different. So me and you will have this conversation about parenting a million times. And it'll always be a different conversation. Yeah. Always. And people are talking about parenting again. But for me, it's, it's, it's nourishing for me to have these conversations with you. Because it's we always learn more. I always learn more. You always learn more, and we inspire thoughts and stuff in each other. And we're discussing the exact same. Well, we were saying that uh, off podcast, like us talking right now, is we're just thinking. Yeah, like, we don't really know what we're saying and all. Yeah, and that's why I think the joys of having these conversations because you're like, well, what do I actually think? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we were able to do that on the night of the, and then you're surrounded with a lot of like-minded people there as well. So everybody's there to see this guy, all for their own reasons. But there's a there's a lot of conversation that's much easier then because people are in a space, a space. Um, with like-minded people and there's like-minded conversations going on and people can kind of operate within that feeling safe and not feeling like they're gonna it's, there's gonna be an argument or upset or like that so it's nice and some people call that an echo chamber as well I do realise that but it, it was a very enjoyable evening um, uh, why did I call you a bigot? <laughs> because as we're both aware there's a lot of um, like every like every public figure ideology whatever you want to call it, there's always people who don't agree, which is brilliant, I think. I think it's brilliant that people don't disagree. Everyone doesn't agree because it'd be fucking real boring if we all agreed. But in my opinion, a lot of the time nowadays, not agreeing with what somebody says is almost a reason to disagree with everything that they say. So if you say one thing that I don't necessarily agree with, what seems to be happening is now by by automatically I have to disagree with everything you say because if I agree with anything you say, I'm vilifying everything you say. And we see it a lot with Peterson. Peterson hates women. Um, Peterson is right-wing, uh, oppressive. He's part of the patriarchy. He proliferates the patriarchy. All these different phrases that people love to know. But nobody knows what the fuck they mean, really. Anyone who uses these phrases to me, I'm like, you have no idea what you just said to me. Um, but there is a lot of pushback specifically at the moment against Peterson. Mm. Now, I will acknowledge, Peterson has taken it to 11 over the last six months yeah he really has he, he, which which again it's not my it's not how no, I would do things I, I wouldn't necessarily like it his kind of approach the last six no, months no and for me it's kind of it's polarising because if you, if you don't agree with Peterson now it's very easy to not like him because yes. he's, be, he's, he's become quite um, outspoken and almost aggressive um, he's joined forces with the Daily Wire again I don't have a problem with Shapiro necessarily I disagree with a lot of what Shapiro says but he's joined forces with people who proliferate that and they drive a lot of um Anti woke narrative, mm -hmm. and I agree with most of it. To be to be perfectly honest, but I don't agree with how it polarizes people. Like for example, if I don't agree with somebody on something, I I don't want us to push for it. Apart. I don't want to win the argument. Like I want us to be able to have a conversation, discuss it, and then we can still be sound. Like whatever. But it's very easy to make Peterson out to be a bad guy because he's getting a little bit more aggressive about it. Now I, I completely disagree with anybody who if you if you paint Peterson out to be anything except someone who wants to help. You don't understand. Well, I think, you haven't listened to much of his content. Well, that's what I was trying to say. I think because like, you wouldn't get that from actually consuming his content no. properly. You know, I think because what you enjoy about Peterson, what I enjoy about Peterson, and what I we always talk about are principles. Principles. So go back to say movement, and we're very big on our principles when it comes to movement. Do you do movement. Yeah, we do movement apparently. Yeah, oh. but there's a lot of different systems. So if you want to physically move better, there's a lot yes. of different modalities that you can go down. You know, just look at two re really simple ones of yoga and Pilates. Yes. So the two different systems of movement, and one is not necessarily any worse or better than the other. They're just different systems, but the principles behind those systems are much deeper and underlying. Yeah. So just go to yoga and Pilates. What's one underlying principle about them? Responsibility. You do the work. It's your body. And you go and do it any which way you kind of want to. But the principle is for both of them. And the modality might be different. And that's why I, I, I like uh, Peterson. Like I said, I wouldn't agree with everything that he talks about. But fundamentally, his principles that he stands for and responsibility w w would be one of them. Uh, that life is difficult and we're all going to suffer is another. I would agree with. And then when he goes down different avenues, you're able to unpack the principles down these avenues. And that's why 
if you don't consume his content, I could see genuinely how you might think yeah. this thing. But it's the same with any kind of ideology or someone that you're not actually understanding what they're talking about because it is so much more principle-based. And I just hate this idea, like you said, that I agree with this one part of what he says, which means that everything he says is now what I take on board as fact. Yeah. And I don't. Like, I, I'm looking at the principle. I'm taking bit from my own life that I can go with the responsibility and the suffering of life. Yeah. And it's it's now it's even deeper than that because you agree with him. Therefore, you agree with everything he says. Therefore, you are what I think he is. I think he is a okay, bigot. Right. So therefore, you liked this one thing that he said. You're a bigot. And, so, and also, I have to defend him. And, and you have sort. to defend yeah. him and yourself now yeah. because my belief is that he is a bigot because probably I don't understand actually what he's saying. And what he's saying is be a good person. Take responsibility. Like sort yourself out before you try and fix the world. I think, I mean, you can't really argue with any But of like one principles. of the biggest things I got from that night was he talked about how if your child is playing, she feels loved. So if you, if you have a child and what they do at home is they play all the time, you have facilitated, literally what he called a playground with a walled garden. Yes. You've facilitated a... a an a, environment. An environment that they go, I feel so safe that and so loved that I can play. So again, just go back to the principle of why that's important to me. I have a daughter. I'm going to have more children. I want to ma make sure that I'm giving her and those whatever, the best life. So I've got to create a playground. I want to make sure that she feels loved. So if I'm looking at her now since that lecture, she's playing. I, I feel nothing but love. Yeah. Because I know she feels loved. Oh, that's life changing for me. Yeah. I'm getting a bit shivery here. Yeah, but that, that's what I mean about the principle. So get away from like, again, woke arguments or the system or what, right and left wing, et cetera. I'm not concerned with that. I'm the underlying principle of who I can, I'm taking responsibility for this child. I want make, to make sure she feels loved. I don't know if she does or not. And he just gave me a context going, well, she's playing. She feels loved. Yeah. Okay. And then go back to it. I haven't blocked book time with her. Fucking hell. Let's get three hours of play. Me and her. Yeah. Oh, I might get realizations here, man. That's, that's outrageous. I haven't got blocked book time. <laughs> but but, but, but like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the principle, again, is just so much deeper than just the narrative that we're, sp we're spouted. And you don't have to agree with him. Like, I don't agree with everything that he says. But like you said, it doesn't mean that the truths that he is saying are untrue just because you don't agree with him. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I mean, this might be a little bit reductionist and a bit simple, but if you can take information from a person or a thing or whatever that helps you improve your life and doesn't affect anybody else, like what's the problem? What is the problem here? I, I, I know where a lot of the issues with Peterson comes from because a, uh, a lot of the narrative centers around young men who are like the, the Andrew Tate following. Yeah. Young men who are lost and are being led by Peterson to be anti-female and to be like bring back the male dominated world and all this. And that's not the message at all. But a lot of young men misinterpret that message as well. Yeah. Like I watched a couple of videos today about, uh, it was, it was guys doing, young guys doing podcasts. It was on like one of these meme pages and the young guys doing podcasts and the shit that they are spouting and they're using names like Peterson because these are young men who are completely lost who think that, yeah, the way out here is to to just shit on everybody else. and Because they, they think they're listening to guys like Andrew Tate as well, who, like, we'll have the same conversation about him. Some of the principles, you can't disagree with how he talks. What, what, sorry, what he talks about, but how he presents them can very easily be misinterpreted by both sides. So I'm a young man, I see him, I think, yeah, fuck, maybe that, that is how he should live. Just, everyone mm -hmm. should respect me and, and that's not, that's not the principle that Tate's talking about. He, he does believe you have to earn respect, but he talks about it in a really, really, poor way that's easy to misinterpret and, and he knows what he's doing but it. let's go back to what we were talking about at the start of the podcast like social media and the distraction and if I'm just consuming all this yeah. I'm not able to have a conversation with you there's no real context around what's actually happening yeah. you can't unpack it no. I think the difference with me and you is that we're in our 30s like if I was in my 20s consuming Andrew Tate I probably would take a lot of on going yeah yeah he's dead right yeah. and I look at him now going holy wait a second mate there's a lot that is completely wrong now again some of the principles are, are okay but like the way he's delivering that message is completely wrong in my eyes like it is in comparison and say Peterson Peterson just isn't spouting the same vitriol as I think that Tate is but yeah. again there's underlying principles that are, that, that are okay did you hear uh, Olivia Wilde called him the king yeah. of the incels yeah <laughs> which is just complete it's just not it just means she doesn't understand it no yeah. but it's, it's that, that's so far removed from what, what he actually does yeah. it, it's like you couldn't but part of the problem is there is a community of young men who aren't doing what they want to do in life, who 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 not where they want to be. And this is like for me, it always boils down to something similar. It's people who are struggling. So I'm just using young men who are struggling as an example here. Like there's young women who struggle, and it comes out in different ways. 
but young men who don't have a purpose, don't have good role models, don't know what they're doing, they're pissed off, they're angry, they're upset, they're being spurned by, in the case of this incel word, by females, they don't have relationships with women, and so they become very, very negative towards women. They think the women are the problem. Mm -hmm. And Peterson's message is, actually, guys, you're You're the problem. problem. But these guys quote a lot of Peterson stuff and a lot of Tate stuff incorrectly because they haven't consumed the content properly, they have no context for it, they don't actually reform their lives in any way. Like When I listen to Peterson stuff, it makes me want to be better. Uh, it, what I see with communities like that who listen to Peterson stuff, it gives them an excuse to not be better because they're saying, well, he says this and he says that. Yeah, well, I also think as well at that age because I remember being that age and it certainly wasn't uh, the environment in terms of social media and all that it is now. No. So just, I wasn't consuming this and I'm not saying, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's difficult for them. Like, I'm, yeah. I, I Sam, I get it, I understand it, but that's why I believe it's very easy to point at Peterson yeah. as the leader of this narrative and trying to keep this patriarchal fucking misogynist society alive and it's completely the opposite. But I can see, I can see what that argument made which is the whole point I'm trying to make here most of us just want to be good people get along and live better lives many of us especially younger people nowadays really struggle really struggle with a direction or, and a purpose and a what the hell am I doing or accepting here? that responsibility because it's, it's a really heavy load like it's, it's difficult 100%. to just take responsibility for your life exactly uh, So and it's very easy as you've said to find a reason on this phone within six seconds where you don't have to take responsibility and then go back to that the dopamine here it's taking the killing the it's motivation. It's fucking nightmare, man. So for, for now, for me to consume all this, yeah, I'll actually do nothing with this information. Yeah. Because all I'm doing is consuming. Yeah. And I used to consume this in my twenties through books. Yeah. Not social media. Yeah. So like, it's just it's ten x. It's yeah. just on steroids. And it's a different you'll tend, level. You'll tend to consume information, even the way the platforms are set up. You'll tend to consume information that reinforces what you already believe instead of challenges what you believe. Because if it challenges it, you're not going to like it, so you'll swipe by it. So it'll just serve you more. And shit. hence, why ha- being in an environment having these conversations, I, I, what I'm consuming, I'm not saying is 100 percent right. Yeah. But let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. What do you think? What do I think? Oh, brilliant. I never thought about it that way before. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I like yeah. that because yeah. we are all just struggling and learning, and we do just want to be good human beings. Yeah. So take it back to the principle. We all suffer. So we're trying to help each other. Yeah. It's not necessarily right and wrong. We, we are genuinely trying to be good for ourselves, those we love, and the community at large. Yeah. It's simple. It's far from easy, but it's very simple. I feel like that's a very good way to get to the root of most of this, like, social shit. I, I, is, is this person or are you trying to help somebody? Yes. Or are you just trying to push an, a, a narrative or blame somebody for some somebody's misfortune? So, for example, this outrage culture or cancel culture or are you looking for somebody or something or a group to blame for the misfortune of another group or person? Or are you trying to help somebody? Because they're different things. And in most, in my experience, most of these bullshit arguments that people throw at the wall or at each other or at me or whatever like that is, well, you're so not progressive and you need to support this and support that as well. Are you saying that because you are, you actually think you're helping somebody or because you believe that somebody else is responsible for this group's misfortune? Because they're two totally different things. Like men are responsible for the misfortune of women. Is that the argument? Or do you actually want to help women? Because they're two completely different things. And do you want to help men as well? Because it's not the same thing. And I find that that's a great way to get to the, straight to the bottom of whatever a person is saying. You're not progressive. Well, are we, how are we helping a person with this particular argument? Or are you just saying it because this group of people are being oppressed by this group of people? Like, that's not helpful. That's just fucking social narrative. Yeah, and I, cause you've said this to me so many times. I'm pretty sure you said it on podcasts as well. Is that we're all just looking for a connection. Yeah. So we kind of strive for this thing or we think this thing is the yeah, We're all just looking for that connection ultimately with no, another human being or a tribe or a community or people of like-minded yeah, exactly. thing. Yeah. And I, I think that's why, and that, that's why I just don't like this idea of kind of taking the responsibility because it's extremely difficult to take responsibility. So they, they, I, I completely appreciate that. Otherwise though, you're just giving your power away and you're blaming someone else. You yeah. want someone else to do something for you. And that that's just not how you're going to have an empowered life. Yeah, You, you need to have the responsibility yourself, do the work. Because like I said, once you do small little bits like we're seeing over the last year or two, we go, wait a second, I have more. I have more. And it doesn't make it easier because we all struggle. But having conversations, understanding the power that we do have is so much more empowering. Yeah, So much more empowering. Yeah, and to bring this, like you've done there, to, uh, on a positive note, like all that sounds really negative. My underlying belief with all of this is most people want exactly what you said there. They're good people. They just want connection. 100%. We just get caught in this shit. And we've had conversations recently about people who might spout this bullshit that they've seen on, they're, they're part of an ideology, they've seen something on Facebook, they're getting outraged about something and they come and they spout this absolute horse shit. And it's really hard to disagree with a person because I just believe this is just a good person. 
may, maybe I'm wrong. So let's have a conversation. Mm. Fine. I'm not just saying, oh, I'm right, you're wrong. But they're just a person like me and they believe this thing and they genuinely think that this is the right thing to do. But it's it's just a regurgitation of a thing, a rhetoric. So it's very hard for me to really like push back on people because it's they just they just want connection. They just want the same thing. They think this is the right thing. But then that question comes in again. Are, like, are we actually helping somebody with this thing? Because most people want to help other people. Or is it just... You you think this is an this is an injustice that we have to fix. It's an injustice, and that's where this whole social justice warrior. Well, I think in. go back to Dan Peterson, and one of his principles is uh, clean your room. Yeah. And everyone's like, "Well, that's all great, clean your room." Like, but there's so much chaos happening all around the place. Like, what the hell are you saying that for? And it, what he would say to that, because I've literally watched his lectures, he's like, "Well, who are you to say what other people should do in really difficult, extreme, crazy um, social structures that are so complicated?" And yet you can't even look after yourself or your own house. Yeah. And it's not about changing the world. It's ultimately just changing ourselves. And as a result, we can have a bigger impact. So we're just trying to fall back. I think it's always coming back to just ourselves, having that connection and making sure that we're able to progress in life, whatever that looks like. But we all want to make sure that people like feel good and, and have opportunities. Like that that's we get, like we're all human. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? There's very, very few psychopaths or whatever, yeah. and they're different. But I don't know what the statistic would be, but 90%, 95%, 99%, the vast majority of people want everyone to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why I just don't get the, the arguments then. I just think it's kind of... But you do. We just described what, why the arguments happen because it's very hard to build self-awareness. It's very easy to use these platforms and consume this information and regurgitate it and feel like you're doing the right thing. So... We, we, we've we just described in the last hour here because we're looking up to the hour here now why that happens because it's it's so much easier to get sidetracked and distracted by all of this stuff and outsource it all to somebody isn't it terrible what this person's doing to this person and what's going on here and, all that. and yeah there's some terrible stuff absolutely going on in the world but outsourcing that is not going to solve the problem ever trying to fix all those problems is not going to solve but it's really it's way harder to look inwards like we just said earlier on that time um, exercise time study yeah. I feel resistance even thinking about it that's awful yeah it's fucking awful <laughs> it's, it's awful. so hard to do it's this so shit it's so terrible you see exactly what you're not doing and what you are doing which yeah. is not helping at all and at the risk of this whole thing sounding like a fucking either Peterson Praise <laughs> podcast or a self self fucking um, flagellation thing or something like yeah it's it's uh, <coughs> my, your goal and my goal I know because we talk about this all the time is to really to drill, drill down in ourselves and find out like how do we actually think about things what do we think about things and how can we have impact we want to have impact on other people's lives and empower other people like I say this all the time my thing is empowerment I want to empower myself and empower other people and I can't empower other people until I empower myself so I want to learn all this shit um, so the whole goal here is to try and build this awareness in myself and then maybe help other people build that awareness because I know how fucking hard it is and I've had help building it in me and Peterson has been a part of that you've been a part of that my family's been a part of that I've had lots of influences to help me build more self-awareness and I believe it's amazing and we talk about this all the time Like it's, this is an amazing way to live it's terrifying but amazing and we're becoming more comfortable with the terrifying bits they don't get less terrifying but we're becoming more comfortable which means we're able to level up a little bit and level up and that's why I talked about this 2% improvement towards the end of the year because I'm improving I'm getting better at this mm. I'm not getting worse so the whole mission here and why we have these discussions and why we talk about these kind of people and try and figure out what's going on is to help people I, I really want to help I want to help myself and I want to help people so we want to understand it but I think like you do, we do understand the practicalities but it doesn't mean it's any easier it's really hard mm. it's so much easier to not do the work and it all comes back to this personal work and that's what clean your room means it's a metaphor I, obviously actually clean your room but it is a metaphor for like tidy up what's going take on take ownership take, take responsibility on and it's so hard mm. so that's what I'm saying at the risk of me saying like everyone should just do this why don't you just read 12 hours for life and do this it's really really hard and I'm struggling it's a very hard journey and I couldn't do it without support from the people around me but it's worth it and I think that's the answer. I do think it's the answer. I don't think there's an answer to any one of these questions that you see all on Facebook and Instagram and people. I don't think there's answers to any of those questions. There's no right and wrong side because everyone mm. just wants people to get along. I think the answer's in there, in here. And in I, but uh, Evan, you said there, you summed it up really well. I think it's interesting because there is always tomorrow. I think that's what we're realizing over the last kind of, particularly over the last kind of six months or so as we're talking through the journeys of 75 hard, primal 60. Like there is no end. And then we, we don't have the answers and we know there's always more. And I think that's just the joys of life, you know? Like we are just having that connection. We're just talking on podcasts and thinking out loud here. Yeah. And as a result, get a little bit more awareness, as difficult as it might be, yeah. and go, well, let's try to be better tomorrow. I was laughing there as you were saying, I was thinking, 
are people actually going to like this episode? Because it was very abstract. And then I was like, I listened to, uh, I watched a video this morning of, of three guys talking about the ingredients in sprinkles on ice cream. For 45. <laughs> I didn't watch the podcast, but I saw that this was the entire episode. It's like, we're doing all right. Yeah. We're doing okay. Uh, let me ask you the question before we, we jump off, because we're still under the hour, as far as I can know. Orla, are we still under the hour on your end? Uh, not really, but we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cut, cut what Orla said out there. Orla said, yes, Dan, we're still under the hour. Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, before the end of the year, what would you like to work on, improve, aim towards, grow? Yeah, well, you mentioned about that kind of focused work. So even just right now, I haven't talked to you the, the last hour, I get back that time with Sailor. Yes. It is in terms of my, my physical training and then just focused work with business where we've hired some new staff, my role is changing in terms of what I, I did do. And there's definitely a lot of resistance on my part to let go. So it's, there's not any kind of specifics just yet, hence why I'm going to do the time study. You know, I, I don't know. I need that clarity. Yeah. I want to find out where I'm at right now, but there's no doubt it's more focused and like you said, they're just the 1%, the 2% better. As long as that trajectory is going in the right way, and I am genuinely improving, as small as it might be, I'm happy. And I've just felt the last three to four weeks, I'm not. If I let this kind of continue on, that won't be the case. So whenever I'm on again and we have a conversation again, I just want to have a lot more clarity. Assuming you're going to be invited back. Well, hopefully I will be, depending. Uh, but I have a lot more clarity and then I am taking more focused action. Okay. And then just continue on that path. Perfect. I'll follow up with you. Thank you, sir. And uh, to catch you completely off guard, Orla, what would you like to work on before the end of the year? Ooh, let's go, Orla. You have to invite me on the final podcast for that. Gee, oh, fair enough. Yeah, I like she's, that. she's calling me out there. Yeah, there we fair. go. Okay. Straight away. Fair enough. I have to take that one between the teeth. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, Ms. Rolachlan, thank you. I think Orla's lying to me here because I think I'm definitely under. Oh, I, I know what's happening. I think I am under the hour here. I think I might be right. Really? Yeah, and I'll explain after. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time as always. Um, even that hour conversation or less than an hour conversation has inspired thought in me as well it's always a pleasure having you on and I'll chat to you in the next one thank you sir